Hey everyone, this is Ronan Dave. I am out in Shizuoka with... Hey, hey! Uh, not your channel name? Oh, this is Molly from the Warmest Rat channel. Mm -hmm. Hi! I'm Tomoko Mrs. Molly, mm -hmm. TNK 8558. We don't have uh, Opie with us at the moment, no. their dog, no. unfortunately. No, Opie had to stop. Are we in Yoshida eating at a... The Eola. This is the... Uh, Eola. Pizza Eola is the mm -hmm. name of the restaurant. Very good. Fine thing. Italian dining. Yeah. Very good food. I'm eating some. How's that lasagna, lasagna Dave? Oh, it's awesome. It's pretty goddamn good. I got the ranch plate. Oh. Organized plate, uh, veggie, meat, rice, a little bit appetizers, mm -hmm. dessert. Oh, nice. I, yeah, so I'm, I'm just hanging out here in Shizuoka. I was somewhat near the area yesterday, Numazu, for uh, a festival, a fishing festival, where the fishermen dress in women's kimono. Oh, really? So it's like a cross-dressing festival. Oh, oh. Yeah. The, the lady at the tourist office gave me the wrong information. I only caught like mm. 10 minutes of the end. So I went back and uh, killed her. <laughs> but it, uh, it, it, it was a seppuku. She, she realized she made a mistake, and so I served as her second, which is, uh, you know, I cut the head off after she had taken the dagger and, and drawn it across her belly. And I let the family keep the head because, you know, I'm not that ruthless. But anyway, so we're in Shizuoka, uh, Shizuoka uh, Prefecture. What do you like about living out here in Shizuoka? Uh, country life. Hmm? Mm, I, I like that uh, I'm not big on the hustle and bustle of the city. I'm from a small town in Kentucky, population of about 5,000 people. So being here, it's about well, less than a million people in Shizuoka City, about 700,000, I think. And we live about 40 minutes outside of there. Our city's probably got about 120,000 people. Um, so it's considered kind of kind of rural for Japan. So I'm, yeah, I like it. I like the country life. How Green Acres is the place to be. How long have you been living out here in uh, Shizuoka? I have been here for 26 years. Wow. Yeah, my well, basically my entire adult life. Mm. And what are some of the um, uh, claims to fame in this area? Uh, Mekong, which are mandarin oranges, and uh, green tea, Mount Fuji. Uh, what else we got, babe? Wasabi. Wasabi. Famous for seaports, mm. Mm, especially the city called Yaizu. It's a very famous for the, the fish. Uh, yeah, we got a big, we got a big fish market here. Mm. So yeah, yeah. Nice here. I, I don't think I can handle Tokyo life. <laughs> Not for me. Too busy. In Shizuoka City itself, there's the uh, castle, Sunbu Sun, 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 Sun Castle. Uh, I came across it last night uh, from the far edge of it, I guess the uh, mm -hmm. northern, far mm -hmm. north side. It was just a turret. Uh, turret. Um, that's so special. I thought, okay, it's one of these just rinky dink reconstructions where they've only done one little castle tower. But then I walked through the park and came to the main gate, and that was quite impressive. Mm. It looked like something out of a samurai movie set. <laughs> Had a wooden bridge um, uh, and massive entrance. That's over on that right corner, right? I think. Yeah. yeah. And I was there when they were closing. Yeah. Uh, no, the museum. Yeah. And that's right, at the music hall. Yeah. And I was there uh, at the closing, which is 10, mm -hmm. so I got to see him shut the main gate. And then this morning we went to uh, a uh, reconstruction of a prehistoric site uh, from the Yayoi period. Yayoi, I always been mispronounced it, Yayoi. Yeah. That's from, traditionally from 300 BC to 300 AD. Uh, basically, this is a culture that introduced wet farming rice to Japan. So the Yayoi period, um, this is where you get a lot of what we think of actually as kind of Japan today, early uh, proto-Japanese culture. Yeah. Things that we got from the Chinese chronicles that we know about that, um, like clapping the hands like you do at the shrine mm -hmm. today, that was recorded by the Chinese. And basically they, they were responsible for introducing rice and war, as I mentioned in another video about that culture. And the interesting when I say Yayoi, uh, that's actually just a made-up name for them. It's uh, that's a district in Tokyo where their first pottery was found. Oh, really? That's why it's called that. It okay. has nothing to do with the people themselves. Nothing to do with their culture. It's just that in this 
Yaoi district mm -hmm. of Tokyo, a professor found uh, pottery that was different than the older Jomon period, and that's but from a get, later date. And that's where we get Pottery Barn. Mm. <laughs> but that's where the, the name comes from, so it really has no connection whatsoever with the people. Whereas Jomon, uh, that name is also a modern name, but that's related with the rope monk pottery that they made. So it's about, so it does have something to do with the culture. Yaoi is just, this happened to be where they found their pottery. And nothing else. <laughs> So if it had been found in Shinjuku, maybe we'd be calling it the Shinjukuians or something. So anyway, so we went to this reconstructed uh, Yaoi village called Toro that uh, existed around the first century CE. So we would say AD in the old way, mm. but CE now. And uh, yeah, they had some of the old type of huts set yeah. up and storage uh, facilities that were up on stilts. Uh, while he was he was in the car waiting, um, something interesting happened. You want to tell people what happened? So I'm sitting in the car, pulled into an area where the where the buses and the taxis come in, and I purposely stayed in the car because of that, um, in case I had to move the car. And because the parking facilities were really bad in this area. Yeah, there was there's no parking there, so I figured you know they're not going to be there long, so I'll just wait in the car. So I'm sitting in the car, and this guy walks out. And he's, he's eyeballing me the whole time he's walking out. He's staring at me. And I'm watching, and he's walking away, and I just kind of said, what are you looking at? You know? <laughs> and he turned around, and he came back to the car, and he said, what are you doing here? I said, I'm waiting for my wife. He said, well, you can't park here. I said, well, she's coming right back. And he was getting really rude. And I was like, go away. Bye-bye. I don't want to talk to you. And he started to walk away, and then he came back, and he actually grabbed my door handle and Jeez. opened my door. So I threw my seatbelt off, and I jumped out of the car, got yeah. up in his face. See, that kind of shit would get you shot in the States. <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I mean, and I'm, grabbing someone a car door, you don't, you don't do that. Yeah, and I told him, you know, you need to, you need to go away from me before I get deported. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, you know, yeah, you sure, you were in the wrong spot, but it wasn't like you were exactly parked because you were in the car right. if, idly. If he would have just come over and said, excuse me, could you move your car over yeah. to over there, wouldn't have been a problem. Yeah. It's, it's all about how you approach the situation. Yeah. Like you said, I'm sorry you can't park here, but there's a place over here, blah, 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 would have been fine. Yeah. But opening your door? Yeah, ooh, yeah, a little, yeah. Too much. a little too yeah. much. So unfortunately we had to cut that trip a little short. Yeah, sorry about that, Dave. <laughs> and then uh, we, we went down to their place in Fuji Eda. Fuji Eda. Fuji Eda. What is Fuji Eda's claim to fame? Fuji. Fuji. The, the flower. Mm. Or oh, soccer. And soccer, yeah. Oh, soccer, okay. Yeah. yeah, a lot of professional soccer players are from mm -hmm. Maui City. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but yeah, the, the Ada is town, mm -hmm. right? So the Fuji Ada. Oh, yeah. The, the purple, the hanging purple. Oh, uh, I see. Okay. Uh, I called? thought it was just because... Uh, um, Exteria. Exteria. I was just... I thought it was because of the mountain. Exteria. because Wisteria. 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 Yes, okay. I've seen that in a lot of old, um, mm. uh, old woodblock prints. Yeah. Um, but I just thought, because everything around here is named Fuji something. Yeah, right, right, Fuji. Right, right. So there's like, there's Fuji Yoshida, there's Fuji, um, uh, well, there's Fuji Fuji Station, <laughs> uh, right. Fuji Eda, uh, there's further to the east, Fuji Sawa, uh, because you get a really nice view of Mount Fuji from there. Yeah, that, I was in Fuji, then that Fuji is two different. Uh, okay. But here it's kind of a combination of both, mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah. These are Fuji flowers. I don't know how well you'll get that. Oh, that's not bad. Another interesting thing about um, the Shizuoka area. This used to be uh, controlled by the Imagawa clan. Okay. Yeah, Sumpa, uh, Sumpu, Sumpu. Sumpu Castle was originally a castle. Uh, that, that, uh, that, that was the name of Shizuoka City, actually, back in, back in the day. Right. Mm. Well, yeah. Before the city became a city, uh, we, it, each prefecture is an individual mm -hmm. country. And so this Shizuoka prefecture was called Suruma. Mm -hmm. And uh, Suruma is the, the head city. Yeah, I think um, yeah, Imagawa was, used to be kind of like the uh, governor oh, okay. of the area. Mm -hmm. The governor or deputy governor. And then in the Sengoku period, when everything kind of fell into a kind of anarchistic mm -hmm. period, he basically became the daimyo, uh, the Imagawa became the daimyo, the warlord of this area. And uh, Sunpu, uh, the, the city at that time, was known back then as Little Kyoto. 
because Imagawa really liked Kyoto, and his wife was a, from from the aristocracy mm. from Kyoto, and so he tried to make her happy, you know, uh, bring a lot of Kyoto culture here. So this area, it's funny, like today it's now like a backwater. <laughs> mm. But back in the day, it was like uh, a clone of Kyoto. This was the place to be. Yeah, because yeah. it was very cultured and refined. Whereas like other, other areas were a bit more rough and samurai-like for war, this was a cultured area. Now it's Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, like the son of Imagawa Yoshi, uh, Yoshimoto, uh, like he he said, like he preferred men that could uh, paint and do poetry rather than swordsmanship, which could be why he lost. <laughs> he ended up retiring and just becoming like a football player. Uh, you know the the old type of football, Kemari. Uh huh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So he was so he was really good at Kemari. Mm. And when um, when Oda Nobunaga. Uh, he was suggested, like, hey, why don't we give back Suraga to um, Imagawa's son? He was like, no, no. He can, he can stay a football player in Kyoto, but I'm not giving him back. But Oda Nobunaga is the one that killed his father anyway. So, <laughs> but so Imagawa, um, uh, during Imagawa's time, he had a young hostage, Tokugawa Yasu. Mm -hmm. That's the statue Shogun, in front of the, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, outside of the uh, uh, the train station, mm -hmm. and so he grew up most of his life actually in yeah. Shizuoka, yeah. right? Not from Okazaki where he yeah. was born. He was in Sunpu Castle, yeah. and then he went up to or no no no, huh? he was at Nihon Daira up at uh, Toshogu, mm -hmm. and then as he got older, they moved it down to down to the Shizuoka. Mm -hmm. Down in Sunpu, yeah, uh, off of the mountain. So, like, so a lot of his growing up was in this area, then. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you know, because later, like later, he be he he became lord of his old region again, mm. Okazaki. And Toshogu actually overlooks the bay. Ah, okay. So he could see if anybody was coming. Yeah. You know, like you said, they were parent back. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, later, he was actually given the lands of the Hojo family, and he chose Edo, Tokyo as his capital for his new shogunate. Mm. And in 1603, he was actually declared the shogun by the emperor. And so Edo became his capital. He retired from that position like three years later, and he moved back to Sunbu. Mm. And that's basically where he lived the rest of his life for the most part. Mm. So he, he wasn't like you, he wasn't a big fan of the big city of Edo either. <laughs> he liked, um, he liked. I guess he liked you know the countryside. And again, Sunpu back then was a cultural area. Sure. Edo back, back in uh, the early uh, 1600s was a roughneck area. Uh, and so he probably much more enjoyed mm. this, away from all the politicians and uh, top ranking samurai. And so this is where, uh, Shizuoka is where he died. Kurt's good at this stuff. Right. But I just find it interesting because Shizuoka is often overlooked by everybody. <laughs> yeah. Foreign and Japanese. But like this very famous historical character, uh, Tokugawa, this is basically his favorite place. Because right. he grew so, up here and basically lived here in retirement until he died. Right. So if you're a foreign traveler coming to Japan, don't come to Shizuoka. <laughs> <laughs> However, I disagree because if you actually like history, mm. It is a very interesting place to come to because, as I said, Tokugawa left his mark here. The Imagawa clan uh, and Toru, uh, Toru, <laughs> the uh, Yaoi uh, village. Just be careful where you park. Yeah. yeah. So I do recommend uh, coming to this area. Uh, it's a very overlooked area, and I think I think you'll find some interesting things here. Mm -hmm. And if you have a chance, come to this restaurant. Very very good food. Most definitely. Yeah. And there's some geocaches around here. Ah. I'm going to go back to eating. See you. See ya. Bye. Don't let your meatloaf. <laughs>